discuss with you uh, what appears to be somewhat of a split in the breeding programs with conic. They come from Italy, right? And we'll, maybe we'll discuss their history a little bit too, and we'll throw that in. Uh, but they, they come from Italy, and, and like always, us Americans like to tinker with things. So they've come to America, and we've started to sprinkle in things or pair up their breedings to, to come up with something different. And so what you're going to find is, uh, especially if you have a keen eye and you've been watching the breed for a while, you'll see differences in the breed and a lot of it is going to be around the head area and what you're going to notice is just different looks with the eyes, uh, different looks with the head shape, the snout, uh, so you know everyone has their preference. Uh, I like nice big meaty blockheads, um, but what you'll see is for sure a difference in the tightness of the jowls. So him, he's, he's how I like them, how I prefer them, how our dog is. How they're meant to be. Yeah, I believe how they're meant to be. Loose lipped, extra skin. Remember, they're very closely related to the Neapolitan Mastiff, very similar. Um, see all this? I like that. That's, to me, the breed standard. But you're starting to find more and more tight-lipped ones, very tight-lipped, uh, look more like a pit bull. Uh, or a boxer. Some of the people say they're actually sprinkling in a little bit of boxer genetics in there uh, to get not just a different look and to keep the breed slender and, and a little more manageable and not a you know a behemoth like this boy. Um, so they're sprinkling in the boxer not just for the size and the look uh, but a confirmation or, or being calm in the show ring because l let's Let's get into another topic, which is what is their temperament like? Um, I would say, generally speaking, I don't think Cane Corsos naturally make the best show dogs uh, because they were bred to protect the household. They were bred to be wary of strangers. And if you're going to go into the show ring, these dogs are going to be around a bunch of people, around a bunch of dogs, and they're supposed to be calm, cool, collected. I'm not saying you can't socialize one of these monsters to be calm, cool, and collected. You could, but it's, it goes a little bit against, in my opinion, and everything I'm telling you today is, is my opinion, it goes a little bit against what I think this breed was bred for, which is to be true guardians, true, true protectors of the home, very wary of strangers. If they don't know you by the time they're six, nine, maybe 12 months old, and you're not part of their inner circle, it's gonna be very hard for you to become part of that inner circle, right? They love who they love, and if you're not part of that inner circle, you're a stranger and it'll take a, a long time for them to warm up to you. So, um, again, I told you I talk in circles, we're back to that. It, in my opinion, it appears to be kind of two lines forming, maybe, maybe an American line and more of an Italian line. Um, droopy lips, wrinkly, that's the breed I like, that's the standard I like, but you're finding some more a uh, little tighter looking and, and they don't look right to me so and then there's probably stuff in between um, the other things to talk about he's got a little bit of an underbite to be honest with you I don't know if that's a breed standard or not I think a certain level of underbite is acceptable I could be wrong post in the comments below again I'm not a breeder of them there's that underbite let's check his teeth out while we're at it and he's still a puppy mind you but check this check this out yeah relax Bubba yeah, I know, I know. I'm just trying to get them a, a view. But look at all that extra lip. Yeah. Good boy. Sit. Good boys. All right, folks. We are back. I lost my camera lady, so it's just me and uh, my GoPro and my tripod and these two uh, fine gentlemen here. So this is Zephos. He is our 10-year-old Cane Corso. Uh, again, we've had him since he was eight weeks old. Um, he is, as far as the breed standard is concerned, uh, right on the very bottom edge of what would be considered acceptable as far as his height and weight. Um, he is still a beautiful dog. Uh, he's an old man now, so he's got a lot of gray in his beard, but as you'll notice, he's, a, he's what they call a blue brindle. So he's basically gray, some touches of white here and there, obviously a lot more white as he's gotten older, and uh, he has uh, tiger stripes or brindles, uh, or brindling, excuse me, which is kind of that yellow, uh, now we'll call more of a tan color in his coat. A really beautiful color. The sun is uh, behind the clouds right now. You'll see it better when the sun pokes out. And again, we have Bronx here, 19 month old, uh, 160 pound Cane Corso uh, black brindle with the, with the tan brindling. 
All right, so he's not finished growing. He's definitely finished growing. Uh, Zephos, even though he's a beefcake, he is still, uh, and hopefully you guys can see him. Again, I, I can't control the camera angle right now. He is... Uh, very very athletic extremely athletic and, and so is Bronx here so don't let their size fool you one of the most athletic uh, breeds on the planet in my opinion um, so let's talk a little bit about the history of these dogs and again I am no historian I am NOT a dog breeder I'm simply a professional dog trainer and I just speak to you about my experiences with different breeds. I just happen to know a lot about Kane Corsas because I own one. This is my one and only personal dog. Um, I have had other personal dogs, but they, they passed away several years ago. As they got older, I had a police dog. I've had black labs, German shepherds my whole life. And um, Kane Corso is currently my breed of choice. I, I love Kane Corsos and we'll get into why. So, down, down, you can get down too, down. Good, stay. So let's talk about the history of these dogs. So uh, they come from a dog that no longer exists called the Roman Molosser. They were years, used during uh, ancient Roman times when uh, Rome was going around and taking over large parts of Europe. They were used supposedly as war dogs. Uh, you can picture them going against the barbarians uh, as they got north out of Italy and from my understanding, the way I can imagine them being used would be like as a first volley. The barbarians did not have a lot of armor or shields or ways to defend themselves if you were to release potentially hundreds, maybe thousands of Cane Corsos um, just at them in one, long, in one big shot. That's how I imagine them being used. Uh, again, I'm not a historian, but I could, I could picture that similar to like how maybe an, an army might launch arrows in the air and take out some softer targets before the infantry approaches. You can imagine hundreds of these dogs charging at you at once. It would be a sight to behold, uh, something truly incredible. And so with that in mind, knowing that these dogs were bred for war, and probably used in the Colosseum as baiting dogs to fight lions, tigers, bears, you name it, whatever they could uh, bring from their travels abroad back into the Colosseum. I believe they would be using these dogs as uh, uh, for sport. Um, eventually, the Roman Empire fell and these dogs then became guardians of the farmlands, uh, maybe people who still had money uh, and they had estates that they needed to protect. Uh, the dogs were also eventually used for, for farm work and just basically an all-around dog. So if I could describe this dog uh, in a phrase would be a really all-around dog, meaning they can do the protection work, they can do the guardian work, uh, they could be used on a farm, they can be used for herding, they can be used for hunting. Again, maybe not the best when it comes to uh, what we would call a, a herding dog, but this is stuff I've heard that, that you could be, that you could use them for pretty much anything. Extremely, extremely intelligent. And I think if, if I had to sum it up in a nutshell, what I think these dogs are best bred for is their ability to guard a homestead. It is 100% in their nature uh, to be very protective. I mean, if you're, you're, if you're watching them now, they cannot stop but to keep looking around and scanning for potential threats. And, and that's their job in a nutshell. They love to, to be protectors, to be bodyguards, to be that bouncer at the door to check any potential threat that could be coming their way. So that's the history of the Cane Corso as I know it. And I guess we could get into the fact that these have only been very recently recognized in the AKC. I want to say in the last few years. I know when we bought him 10 years ago, the breed was not recognized in the AKC. And they are now. All right, folks, so we're back for part three. Uh, this is the last dog we'll show you. This is Thanos. He is a about 10-month-old Cane Corso, imported directly from Italy. Owner paid a lot of money for him. Uh, comes from good breeding stock. He's a really handsome dog. Hopefully you see in some of the shots here. Uh, but we're going to close this video out and finally answer for you, is the Cane Corso right for you and your family? And uh, we'll cut right to the, to the chase. I do not think the Cane Corso is right for most families. The majority of families, uh, and individuals should not own a Cane Corso. Yes, they are beautiful dogs. Yes, they are unbelievably impressive, um, but they are unbelievably powerful too. 
and yes, in the wrong hands, this dog can do a lot of damage. You're seeing more and more of these dogs ending up in kill shelters. Uh, more and more of these dogs just doing ugly things. In fact, we just had a police canine, uh, correction, a police SWAT uh, team member serving a search warrant in a pretty rough neighborhood and a Connie Corso got out, ran up and bit him on the hand, real ugly, uh, wasn't letting go. And the, the SWAT uh, member had no choice but to um, shoot the dog and ultimately the dog died. Uh, but that's the type of dog this is, is they will not hesitate uh, to attack someone that they feel is an intruder, which you would say, hey, that's gonna be awesome for my house. It's exactly what I want. I want a dog I can trust to take care of business when I'm not there or while my family's there. The problem is um, th th dogs aren't always the best at determining who's a friend and who's a foe. So it's when that neighbor comes over, uh, when that mailman comes over, or the, the, the local police officer comes over to serve a warrant, <laughs> dog's gonna be uh, taking care of business. Now most dogs would run and hide from, you can imagine 10, 15, 20 SWAT team members storming out of a truck to hit a house. That would terrify most dogs. Flashbangs going off. Not the Connie Corsa, man. He went right up and bit the first one he can get a hold of. So unbelievably tough dogs, dogs that have the heritage, as we learned, uh, to be in battles, to be in war. Is that what you need for your suburban household? Probably not. They have unbelievably uh, high thresholds for pain, so it's a little harder to train them in compulsion-wise. You can do it, but you got to have an unbelievably firm hand. You'll see here we got a prong collar on him. E collar, ready to go. He is off leash. We're in a neighborhood. You know, if he wanted to chase after something, I need a very reliable way to bring him back. If you're not a fan of using uh, these types of tools of the trade and you want to do purely positive training with your Cane Corso, look me in the eye when I tell you. Pay attention here. This dog is not for you. Do not buy this dog if you think you're going to train him all the way with 100% reliability feeding him uh, treats. It's not gonna happen. Yes, you can take him very far, but your training will never be guaranteed and reliable. And when you have a monster like this, okay, this dog is 10 months old and almost 100 pounds. He's gonna top out around 130, maybe even 140, and there's kind of courses out there that are bigger than that. Can you handle that dog? Can your children handle that? Can your spouse handle it? Can grandma, when she comes over to puppy sit or your neighbor, are they gonna be able to handle this beast? And most people can't, they don't have it in them. They're not strong enough mentally or physically. So no, this dog, for the most part, is not for you. Anybody that calls me and asks me about, hey, I wanna get one, I know you're very familiar with them. I tell them over and over again, not for you. It's just not for you, huge liability. So, uh, awesome dogs, I love them. There's nothing like them. When it comes to their trainability, you can train these dogs to the moon and back. This dog can do anything under the sun, whether it's hunting, farm work, protection work, uh, just being a good family dog. They can do it, but you gotta be a strong leader and you gotta get the training at a young age and stay consistent and hard on them. Now, if you do that, if you get them the proper training and you yourself learn how to maintain and handle your dog and you are familiar with tools of the trade, and you get your dog understanding what the prong collar is, how to use it. You get that e-collar on and you know how to use it. You go to a nice balanced trainer that knows what they're talking about. Yes, there might be a future for you with the Cane Corso. I, it's one of my favorite breeds on the planet. It is not for everybody, uh, but hopefully that answers your question. Um, incredible dogs, but you know what I would compare them to? I always compare dogs to cars. These are battle tanks. That's what they are. I would take this dog into war any day. But do you need a battle tank rolling down your suburban neighborhood? Probably not. That's why I would recommend you get yourself that golden retriever, get you a Labrador, even a German Shepherd. These are monsters, okay? And you, you gotta respect them. And I'm just so tired of seeing people get these dogs and, and not put the training in and let the dogs run rampant. And then next thing you know, they're out hurting humans or hurting another dog or even their owners. And these dogs can hurt you without even trying because they just take you out. One of the things they're known for just from their size, they're right at knee level. If they bump into you by accident, they will blow your knee out this quick. Ask me how I know. So uh, I think that about wraps it up. Anything from Andrew the cameraman? Anything I'm missing? Donald's come here. <laughs> Sit. Yes. So this boy's getting ready to go back home and he's fully trained, off leash, really nice dog. Sorry, my mic's acting up. This dog's ready to go. Uh, but I'm gonna have a very, very firm and serious talk with the owner 
and make sure he's set to go for the life of this dog and that this dog understands in no uncertain terms that the entire family, this guy and his four daughters, are all the boss. All right, and he is the lowest man on the totem pole. Because if you give this boy an inch, he's gonna take a mile, man. He's gonna roll down their street like a battle tank, like an M1 Abrams. <laughs> Donna's, come here. I'll try to show you his size. I'm 5'10", 230 again, and uh, this is him here. And he's still growing, man. This boy is just a puppy, so. All right, well, thanks again, guys, for watching. You got any comments, put them in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you all on the next video.